Hi, Angela Wolf here, fashion designer and online instructor. And in this episode, I'm working on a men's top where I'm adding a front zipper. Now this could be done to something, this is almost a little thicker sportswear, but it could also be done on something as simple as a t-shirt. So I'll show you how I did this. I started with a basic pattern. This is just my basic t-shirt pattern. And all I did is I raised the neckline up and changed that curve. And that's the only thing I changed except I added a collar which is here. So you're gonna need your pattern pieces and a piece of interfacing because we're gonna add a zipper, you need to stabilize that area. So the zipper I'm using is just a standard zipper. You'll wanna cut this a little bit longer than the zipper and you'll attach it to the back side of the front center front piece. So I'm gonna be using two different pieces of fabric just to show you. But what I like to do is give myself a notch for the center front. That will give me a guide for where that zipper is gonna go and then I will press this into place. And I'm just gonna show you real quick for those of you that have not used fusible interfacing or you get a little nervous about that. The side that's rough is the side that goes towards the wrong side of the fabric. And you have your iron at a medium setting. I prefer to use a little bit of steam and just hold this in place up and down, just like this, a little bit of pressure. Do not go like this. All right, so I'm gonna get this out of the way because I'm actually using this one here. I skipped a couple steps that you don't need to really see. So what I've done is I've attached the fusible interfacing. I again went back and pressed the center front and I've attached the shoulders. So from the right side, if I lay my, this is where the collar is going to be attached. And this needs to be as long, the area I'm gonna cut needs to stop right below this metal part of the zipper. So if I bring this one back over, you can see that I used the binding as a guide at the top. And that's where my zipper started. So the first thing I wanna do is just, I'm just gonna cut down just a little bit and we're going to attach the neckline. Now obviously I'm gonna be opening that up more, but for now, that will be a good guide. Let's go attach the binding. So with right sides together, make sure I got right sides, yeah, right sides. These knits are always so tricky. I'm just going to start, I have a quarter inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning, and then what I do is I just gently stretch the ribbing, just gently as I stitch this around the curve. Get to the shoulder seams, make sure that you have those angled towards the back of the garment. Get my hand out of the way so you can see. And then back around to the other side. Now I'm, notice I'm only stitching on one layer of that rib neckline. I just find this to be a lot easier. You'll be able to insert your zipper and then there's different ways that you can finish that at the end. And again, going around the curves at the center front, I give it just a little stretching, not the I'm not stretching the garment, I'm stretching the ribbing. If you stretch the garment, your neckline will be all over the place. The ribbing, if you stretch it, will make it tight against your neck. All right, that looks great. I'm just gonna go back up here. I think it'll be easier for you to see me cut this. So again, comparing these two. This is gonna fold in half. And once this is tucked under, you have about this much room. So let's see how far down we need to cut. I wanna cut to just below where this is going to go. So right here. Let's just mark that with chalk for now. If you can see that. I'm just trimming right along that folded line. You can see why that press line makes it so nice. Now, I wanna stop before I get to that chalk mark. And now what I'm gonna do is, let's see, let's mark how wide the zipper is. I'm looking at the zipper teeth, and if I give myself a chalk mark to give you a guide. Now I know I won't st stitch over that, but I want the teeth to be exposed. It's just kind of a trendy thing. So I'm gonna snip right inside of that chalk mark, not through, but in. If you've ever put in a bound buttonhole, it's the same thing. 
So there's my snip. Turn this right side out and we'll go to press this. What I'm doing is I'm pressing this back. The entire area that you interface is going to be pressed back. A little steam. I'm using the clapper to hold that in place. And right here. And then once I get to the bottom section, you're going to fold this back, press, and fold this back, the point. Be careful, don't burn your fingers. You better, better to error on that way than too short. So let's go back to the machine and I'll show you a quick and easy way to sew the zipper in. So we're going to start. I'm just going to use one pin right down here. I want to make sure that that area is right where it's supposed to be. Now, the reason I do that is because at the top, my zipper isn't going to go all the way to the very exact top. And that's okay. I planned it that way. I'm just going to kind of walk that up. And I'll put one more pin right here just to give me a guide. If I fold this back, this is your ribbing. Can you see that? So I folded it back wrong sides together. I'm just going to run a basting stitch through that first just so you can see this. Zipper foot's on the other side. Sorry about that. Okay. Actually, I'm using a stitch length of 3.0, but that's fine. So that is going to be the top edge. See how that just finished that off nicely? All right. So now I'm just going to take this out. And now that I know that that fits okay, I'm just going to go ahead and again, go I'm going to start at the top again. I always like to check that first though, by the way. And let's see if I'm just going to go down a little ways. So this is with the wrong side facing up right along the edges of where you stitched. Put your needle in the down position. You can close this zipper and stitch down a little bit further. Put my foot down would help right to there. And I'm just going to cut the thread. I'm going to be stitching from the right side. So there's no need. You really don't have to back stitch. So that side looks great. Now let's go back down here. I'm just going to take this off. I think you'll see it better if not on the machine. All right, now let's go to this side. And this is where you have to be careful that this section down here matches. That looks good right there. So I'm just going to reach my hand underneath and hold this in place. Can you see that okay? All right, again from the wrong side of the fabric. And if you're really nervous, just baste it in place first and then check. So the edge of my zipper is lining up with the edge of the cut fabric. Just slide that open so I can open the zipper up. You never want to <laughs> stitch on that metal. Up to here. And I'm just going to cut that. Notice how I slide the edge of the zipper off just a little bit there. And then again, we're going to fold this back just like we did on the other side. stitch up. All right, so if I fold this to the right side now, that looks great from the front side. We want the zipper to be exposed. Now we need to finish this bottom edge. So from the wrong side of the fabric, just flip it back and you'll see this little triangle. Make sure that that metal piece is out of the way, the metal piece on your zipper. And again, I'll try to keep my hands out of the way so you can see this. It's always the tricky part, holding it so you can see it. 
I am backstitch and I'm just gonna go right around that bottom edge. And you really have to make sure that bottom of that zipper's out of the way or you'll break your needle. Just like that. So I stitch right across and let's flip this around. And that looks nice. I'm gonna give it a pressing and then we're going to top stitch it. Okay, now let's go back to the machine. Now you could use a zipper foot for this or just a regular foot because you're gonna be far enough away from the zipper teeth. I'll just keep the zipper foot on there for now. I'm gonna change the stitch length to, uh, I'm gonna use a triple stitch, which is more decorative, and change the stitch length to a 3.5. And actually, I changed my mind. I'm gonna go to a regular foot. Just gives it a little more stability. And if I use the needle in the far left position, that'll be fine. Again, I'm using contrasting threads so you can see this. Now see how I can stitch right by the zipper with no problem. So the triple stitch goes back and forth. It will stretch a little bit, but it looks great. You might have seen me use that on jeans in the past. So you have to finish the zipper before you sew the rest of the garment together. Flip it around. You have to count the stitches with the three when you go to turn a corner though, because it goes back and forth. You don't want to have too many stitches on one side. All right, and we're just about finished here. All the way up to the right side. I'm just gonna get that zipper head out of the way. All right, let's see what we have here. So here is my zipper. That's all finished and the last step will be to go ahead and stitch around the edge to get that ribbing in place and you're ready to sew the rest of your top together.